In this video, we will introduce some basic concepts of databases. We start by defining what a datum is. A datum is a fact that is unprocessed and unorganized. It could be letters, which would be alphabetical data. It could be letters and numbers, which are alphanumeric data. Numbers, which would be numerical data, consisting of integers or real numbers with decimals. Also, we can have data in the form of images, which have much more information, or a sound as audio, or even more information in a video, or in a combination of these, multimedia. Once we take this data and organize it, it becomes information, and for that we need databases to be able to save them. Once organized, and then extract that data, summarize it, and draw conclusions. A database is an organized collection of data that is organized systematically to be able to consult and extract information and draw conclusions from that information. There are many database models. The simplest is a flat file, a file where we save, for example, notes that we are taking or recipes. Anything that stores data is a database. In this case, we are talking about an analog database, a database that is not on the computer. However, this can be translated directly to the computer by having a text file from a text editor like Word. Where we save data, that would be a very simple but unhelpful database because it would be difficult to extract a summary of the information. There are other database models like the hierarchical data model, the network data model, which we will now see. The relational data model, which is the one on which almost all databases used in business systems are based today. The object-oriented data model and a hybrid model that combines the relational and the object-oriented database models. Let's see them. A hierarchical model consists of storing tables. That is to store datasets in a related way in a tree structure with parent-child relationships. For example, here we have a table in which data about universities is saved. Then we have another, its child, that contains information about the faculties. In this case, information about the School of Civil Engineer and the Faculty of Computer Science. Within each school, we have people and departments. A step further is a network model where tables are related but no longer does each table have to have only one parent, but they can have more than one. It is a network where people can belong to both the School of Civil Engineering and to the School of Computer Science. This is a network model. Both models have advantages to represent, for example, organizations, but also have quite a few drawbacks. Therefore, from these models, the relational database model was developed where the data of an entity, the data about a type of thing, is saved on a table. And what is a table? It is like a spreadsheet, like an Excel table. It is a matrix, a structure that has rows and columns where the relative data is stored. For example, the schools or data relating to people. These tables are related to each other so that the data can be extracted collectively. The data about teachers' schools and the data about the subjects that have to do with those schools. Here's a model of how these tables relate. We will not go into detail in this video, but we will work on how the employees and the shipments are saved in here and whether or not the employee has permission for this called planets. Here we have another table for the clients and another table for the packages. This is not data, this is what is called fields. It is simply a definition of the table, not the table itself. The only thing I wanted you to see is that they are related to each other to be able to extract the data collectively. Then we have the object-oriented databases in which data is stored in objects. This is an information technology construct that allows us to save the data and procedures in the same site and to create what are called classes. 
which may have child classes. For example, in a vehicle class, we may have an automobile class, a motorcycle class, and a bus class. Inside the automobile class, we may have the sedan and the sports cars, or inside the bus class, the luxury and school children buses. All of this has the advantage that each child class inherits the characteristics of the parent class. Then the automobile class has the characteristics of the vehicle class and also a group of its own specific characteristics. The sedan class has the automobile and the vehicle's class characteristics and a group of its own specific characteristics. Furthermore, the data and the operations that can be done on the data are saved together. We won't go deeper into this because it is an extensive field, but I want you to know that there are databases where data is saved as objects. And finally, there are hybrid models where databases are relational and they're also object-oriented. To summarize, we have seen what data is, structured information of various types, and then we have defined what a database is, a systematic collection of data from which conclusions can be drawn and information can be extracted. We have discussed the types of databases, the plain text directly in a flat file, the hierarchical model, the network model, the relational model, which is the most widely used nowadays, the object-oriented model, and the hybrid model, which is a mixture of the two.